上原凛だこれからは特務中隊の一隊員として任務に当たる元気のタイマリン上原凛水産What's happening, fellas? It's your boy Hardcorn, and we're back with someone very, very special today. We've got a brand new character, Miss Uahara Rin, the teacher that really knows how to move it for sure. She's got electricity powers, and she knows how to use them. So let's take a look at her. For starters, she's a suppressed character with human racial traits. So that means she's going to get all the boosts from suppress and also for humans. I've got her at 81 so you can see her which so you can see what she looks like at her maximum potential. Over here we can see that she's got a ton of health. Pretty okay attack, but her defense is through the roof. She's got innately high, so she's got she can take a licking and still keep ticking. Criticals are also very strong as well, so she's got plenty to spare in the, in terms of the critical department. In terms of her weapons, she's got, you know, the, the typical spread, the two URs of the SR and the R's. Well, let's take a look. We have Gregorius over here. It actually uh, deals increased skill damage at 1-5, and then at 5-5 is 26% more skill damage. So it's like having a package weapon, but you can roll it yourself at any time, really. Yokoshima is, of course, the traditional Momochi weapon, or rebellious weapon, whatever you call it. It just lets her deal more damage every time she crits. So this is actually a really good, really, really good weapon. This is uh, absolutely incredible. Now we have Raijin. Rin is already fast, and this is going to make her even faster. It works the similar level as a, a like Asuka's uh, electricity weapon. It increases speed for five seconds. I think four percent at five five. That's twenty percent more speed, essentially permanently. So it's really, it's really good. I I use it a lot when I've been leveling her. Kara, this is a uh, essentially her Indra weapon or whatever it's called. These are, you know, specific racial bonuses or damage to skills. She gets the nice boost to a human damage by 40%. At 5-5, at five five, this is level, this is 80% damage. It's very good. It's very good against uh, hard enemies, especially when you do the boss rush daily, because those have enemies with, they're all humans. So this is like easy mode. Then you combine it with Mito Haruka and you can do like 140% more damage to humans. And of course her R's, we have her traditional signature weapon right here, the Volt Swords. Ultimate damage. And Twin Slash. This actually increases particle charge from attacks by 50%. If you're looking for a particle charge build and you want to really uh, test yourself, this is it. This is it for you. Now we're going to get to the real meat of Rin herself, her skills. Rin has a lot of combo potential for sure. She's got a lot of things that go into each other and move very quickly and have lots of easy setup. I've experimented a little bit with her so I could uh, give some basic combos, but she has a lot going on inside, so let's take a look. We'll start out with Raika. Raika is, you know, the general aerial rave skill. This actually has some use that I've found um, with her combos because she actually has some good setup to actually get some of these off and actually do a lot of damage with them. If you aren't confident in your skilling ability or know how to do certain things or supporters to make these things happen, it's uh, you can omit this. Now we're going to get to her triple green skill, Chain Volt. This is a very strong and very fast skill that you're going to be using a lot. She has very little recovery and very little startup for it with it too, so it's like, it's great. At 10 seconds, you'll be using this on every pack, and essentially you need to keep it on cooldown as much as possible. When you have maximum level cooldown reduction, this goes to 7 seconds. This not only has a projectile right there with her Zeus Spear, she has uh, each of these little uh, strokes of lightning is uh, their own projectile, so it does a lot of damage and can crit a lot, because she has an increased critical rate on it. Most importantly, she applies Electrocution. Electrocution is a, very, is a very specific debuff that only she can apply with her supporter and with her character itself. It is a defense down and also applies the electrocute status, which is essentially a damage over time of uh, electrical damage. And you can apply this from a distance too. This is a great opening skill. You can actually take this just plain by itself because it's just so strong. Next up we have Volt Spin. This is uh, her windmill attack. You know, like Cerberus from like the Devil May Cry games. It essentially works the same way. 
Volt Spin is special because it uh, requires very little color investment and it's also her only healing skill. This is like 5% of given damage. She uh, deals multiple hits and deals a lot of damage with those hits. So there's a lot of potential for her to just recover from zero to full instantly. Not only that, you can also use this skill to apply Electrocute. When Volt Spin is active and it kills an enemy, it will correct itself and go to the next enemy possible. So it's even smart in that sort of sense. It's very, very good. Now we have her Time and an Art. Her Time and an Art essentially just makes it larger and does more damage. Frankly, she already does um, so much damage because she hits two times because she's got two swords. Now that she ha now she has a Murasaki level coverage and range with her attacks with the speed of someone like Sakura. So it's like insanely good. You can actually omit this though because she's already super strong. They made they did that on purpose. Denki. This is a very very important skill for her because it does two things at the same time. It gives her increased speed. It's a lot of speed too and forms an electric barrier. This is her also another signature uh, buff that she gets. It's called uh, electric barrier, like of course. It, also, it gives her super armor and also reduced damage from ranged projectiles, which means if she gets this off, she's not gonna get stunned by gunfire. And it's at 16 seconds, which means it takes a while to come back. So you know what happens? At maximum level cooldowns, this is uh, 11.5 seconds or something. It's 11 seconds. But this is very important due to the fact that it gives her super armor and a damage reduction in general. The speed is uh, almost irrelevant on a character who's this fast already. Now we're at Volt Whip. This is a skill in the uh, Rondo but not Rondo series because she has that AoE attack on the very first hit and then she has this like large series of uh, volt explosions in front of her. It's a two stage attack and it's actually really, it's very, very strong. However, she has to sit there for the entire duration. She can't use her finisher. We'll get to that later. She can't use her finisher and get out of it early. She has to sit there for the entire thing. Red is also home to a lot of debuff damage up supporters. And this also applies electrocution. She applies a debuff to a large crowd of enemies very easily with this. Not only that, she has a damage reduction, so she can actually take a beating during this, and a, da and a damage boost as well. Volt Rush is what I like to call her, effectively her fourth uh, signature skill. This thing is uh, super powerful, because it has lots and lots of strikes, covers a large area, it's fast. However, the sad part about it is that you can still get hit during this entire duration. It effectively actually makes her hitbox enormous. She's not going to be dodging projectiles with this, so you have to actually plan to use it correctly so she doesn't eat a whole shitload of damage. Electric Volt. This is a very interesting skill because she has to plop this down in front of her. It's a very small area too. It causes damage. It does not inflict electrocute when it really should. Thankfully, this actually has the ability to pull characters inside it alongside increasing its duration and critical damage, so it can actually deal a good hit. This is not an attack you take to deal a ton of damage with. This is the attack where you actually use to set up combos and get things off. Soaring Swallow. This is fantastic because it's a finisher attack and it happens anywhere. You can use it off of her time in an art. Volt Spin, Volt Rush, Electric Volt, Volt Hook, Chain Volt, anything really. Raika. You name it, she'll do it off of anything there and she moves so quickly with it too alongside it alongside the fact that she goes behind enemies to do this, which means she can get behind a pack and actually make the boss face away from the other enemies so that, they, so that all the enemies have to turn around to her. Keeps them moving, because if they're moving, they can't really attack very well, they have to sit still. And now we're on to Volt Hook. This is essentially her Devil Bringer attack. Much like any other character that has like, you know, Tentacle Anchor, Whip Grip, you bring them to you. You can also activate Soaring Swallow off of this to get out of the recovery but you won't really need to do that since it's actually so fast it won't matter. This attack is really just a setup for combos and it does it really, really well, but you have to be ready for when it happens because of how quick, of how quick this skill is. Well, while we're at it, let's take a look at some of her costumes. We have her original regular costume, the one that you get at the start of the game. And we have Volt Bride. That's the Desire Shop costume that they have this time around. The substitute Teacher. Comes in several dazzling colors and some you can make yourself. And we have Mysterious Teacher, part of the Secret Garden series. 
can even take the mask off. And we have the bunny girl, which is similar to her actual outfit from like, uh, I think she's from like Taba or RPGX. Then we have the bathrobe, everyone's favorite, because everyone has it. They must like it a lot. And of course, ooh, who could this be? Who could be the dear user in the Time and In universe that has appeared several times in the game? It's Shika. We have Shika now in terms of a costume, so that means our little fellow's gonna be here in the future. And we're gonna and we'll look at him when he comes. Alright, now it's time to conclude on Rin, and frankly there isn't much I gotta say about her besides the fact that she is incredibly strong. She has a lot going for her for sure, there's a lot to like, there's a lot to love, and the fact that she has both speed and power combined together along with the huge hit counts and particle generation. She can really do just about everything. She feels like Red Felicia in that sense, but she doesn't have the sort of longevity behind her and besides the one skill. For the most part, her strength lies in the fact that she has lots of combo cascade potential, lots of AoE attacks, lots of high damage, high hit count moves. She's generally just very, very, very good. 
I can't see very much wrong with her at this moment. If I had to think of a negative though, if I had to think of one thing, negative thing to say to, I would say that she doesn't apply electrocute on enough stuff and she doesn't apply enough electrocute in the right uh, color, which is red. Because red's the one with all the debuffs and it doesn't apply electrocute itself, which is like kind of a bummer. But what can I say? That's, uh, that's all I have for Rin. She's great, but if you were on the fence, I don't know why you would be. Get her. She's worth it on gem, she's worth it paid. Get her anytime she's gonna come your way. But with that, I'm your boy Hardcorn, and I'll see you next time.